Okay guys, uh, here I am with the new chapter from NCRT, uh, all NCRT RS Sharma, chapter 16 in my book, Central Asian Context and Their Results. Now, here I will give mention some important points. Like first, you see in the first paragraph you have seen it. Uh, the Moros were succeeded by a number of native rulers such as the Shungo, Kanbo and the Shadbahan. Okay, try to remember this thing that who who is of the following uh, who is of the following are not successor of the Mora rule. Shungo, Kanbo and Shadbahan. All are right. And the most important thing is that Shungo dynasty is very important in terms of current affairs because there are lots of uh, current affairs uh, current affairs go, uh, is going on related with yoga and we all know that yoga is the invention of Patanjali and Patanjali was uh, patronized by Shunga ruler that is especially the Shunga dynasty is very much important of all of them Kusan, Kushan became the most important mind this thing in the first paragraph then you see the first to invade India were the Greeks who are also called the Indo Greeks or Bactrian Greeks. Sometimes in question in exam you will not find directly the Greeks. Okay, uh, the, you will find the Indo Greek or Bactrian Greek. The uh, in Greek, Indo Greek and Bactrian Greek all are same. Don't be confused. Okay, Greeks are also known as Indo Greeks or Bactrian Greeks. Uh, the most famous Indo Greek ruler was Minander. He is also known by name Melinda Panha. He has his capital at Shakala and he invaded the Ganga Yamuna Duab. He was converted to Buddhism by Nagasena, who is also known as Nagarjun. Minander asked Nagasena many questions relating to Buddhism. These questions and Nagasena's answers were recorded in the form of a book known as Melinda Panha or Question of Melinda. It is very important because it is related to culture. What is Melinda Panha or the Question of Melinda? It is a religious conversation between Nagarjun and uh, Greek ruler Minanda and uh, Minanda was so much influenced by the um, by the conversation uh, by their conversation with uh, by his conversation in Nagachen that Minanda was converted to Buddhism. I mean, all this conver conversation is uh, imprinted in Minanda Panha or question of Minanda. It is important from culture point art and culture point of view Minanda Panha. Okay, so mind this term. Then after that you see. Uh, the, the Indo Greek rule is important in the history of India because of the large number of coins who is the Greeks issued. The thing is that, mind the correctness, I am giving you two options. The Indo Greeks were the first to issue coins in India. The Indo Greeks were the first to issue gold coins in India. So, mind the difference. The Indo Greeks were the first to issue coins in India. Whether the sentence is right or wrong. The Indo Greeks were the first to issue coins in India. The sentence is wrong. Because you see in the paragraph, the Indo Greeks were the first rulers in India to issue coins which can be definitely attributed to the king. Kings. That means mind the last part which can be definitely attributed to the kings. Okay. That means what Indo Greeks were the Indo Greeks were the not first dynasty who issued coins in India. Okay, before Indo Greeks also the some dynasty issued coins like punch mark coins. But what is the difference? The coins issued by the former dynasty before Indo Greeks cannot be attributed cannot be attributed to a particular dynasty. We cannot say that these punch mark coins are issued by this dynasty because the pun there is no mention of the name of the dynasty in the punch mark coins. But in case of Indo Greeks, what happened? The coins which they issued can be attributed to their dynasty uh, surely because the, there is a mention of the name of the Indo Greek in their coins. That is why the first term is wrong. The Indo Greeks were the first to issue coins in India. This sentence is wrong because before Indo Greeks also coins issued by some dynasty but the difference is that Indo Greeks were the first to issue coins in India which can be attributed to them surely. Okay, this sentence, the later sentence, uh, the, if we have found that the Indo Greeks were the first to issue coins in India, which can be attributed to them surely, then the sentence will be right. But the Indo Greeks were the first to issue coins in India, this sentence is actually wrong. 
Now the viewer check and sentences. The Hindu Greeks were the first to issue gold coins in India. This sentence is right because Hindu Greeks are the first to issue gold coins in India. So mind this thing. The uh, mind the differences. Okay, very minor difference. If you, if you don't read carefully, you will miss in exam hall. That's why I am telling you. The Greek rule introduced features of Hellenistic art in the northwest frontier of India. This art was not purely Greek. It was the outcome of Greek contact with non-Greek conquered peoples after Alexander's stage. Okay, you might find option uh, in example. Uh, the Ganhar, the uh, Hellenistic art in India was purely Greek. Hellenistic art in India was mixture of India and Greek. The Hellenistic art introduced by the Greek in India was not purely Greek elements. The Hellenistic art in India in India bears ele elements both of Greek as well as India. Again you see in the case of Shaka and while you are listening the lecture minded when I am telling you will see the mark uh, you will see that portion of your uh, that portion of the text where I have marked where I have given marker I am giving lecture or I am giving points on the that part of the text where I have used marker pen okay that's why when I giving lecture or anything you always keep keep your eyes uh, strictly on the marked point of the text where I have used the marker in case of Shaka you see in this paragraph where I have marked there you will find the mention of the era of Bikram Sambhat Bikram Sambhat era and it is the main important thing is that it is related to culture okay Bikram Sambhat era you might find option in example consider the following statements regarding the uh, regarding the Bikram Sambhat era Okay, it is related to Chaka. It is related to the defeated of Chaka rulers by the king of Ujjain after uh, that, uh, the, uh, after defeating the Chaka ruler by uh, uh, Ujjain king, Brikkam Sambhat era has begun. And in this way, uh, you will find, you might find different options. So while reading this paragraph, you might, you just mind, uh, you just read it from culture point of view because here the, the mention of Brickham Sambhat era, it is an important point from the culture and history. You will find different options regarding the Brickham Sambhat era, whether it, when it is begun, okay, uh, how it came into India, from where it has uh, begun, from how the title Brickham Aditya came in India. In this way, you might find different options here then in the next uh, paragraph you see there uh, where we have found the mention of Rudra Daman why the paragraph is important because you see uh, in here it is a key term Sudarshan Lake in the semi arid zone of Kathiawar the Shaka ruler Rudra Daman one repaired the Sudarshan Lake in the semi arid zone of Kathiawar it is, it is also important you should ma remember this point then in the last point you see Rudradaman was a great lover, lover of Sanskrit although a foreigner settled in India he issued the first ever long inscription in Sest Sanskrit all the earlier longer inscriptions that we have the, in this country were composed in Praki this is very 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 important from culture point of view you might find options in this way that consider the following statements regarding the Sest Sanskrit. Consider the following arguments regarding the Sest Sanskrit. It was first introduced by India. Uh, it was introduced in India for the first time by Shaka Rula Rudradaman I. It was first introduced in India by Greek rulers. In this way, you might find different options here. Though regarding the paragraph of Chaka in NCRT, what we have to remember? First, we have to remember or first, we have to give notice on the Brikram Samhat era. We have to consider this Brikram Samhat era. It is important from culture point of view. Then we have to give importance on Rudra Raman, what he repaired. He repaired Chudarsan Lake in a semi zone of Kathiawar. Then what is the importance of uh, Rudra Raman from culture point of view? The importance of Rudra Raman for culture, from culture point of view is that he issued for the first time, uh, uh, he, is, uh, inscri he is for the first time issued inscription in Sest Sanskrit. He introduced Sest Sanskrit. Before that, before uh, it, uh, uh, all the inscriptions were in Prakrit. Then after them, in case of the Parthian, 
what point is important in case of Parthian? You see, the most famous Parthian king was Gandu Farne, in whose reign Asti Thomas is said to have come to India for the propagation of Christianity. This line is important. You might find an um, uh, option in exam. Uh, Christian preacher S. T. Thomas came into India during the rule of Chaka, during the rule of Parthian, during the time of Maurya. Who is this correct? The, my, always minded, but the S. T. Thomas came into India to preach Christianity during the reign of Gandhu Farni, who was a Parthian ruler. Now regarding the uh, now regarding the Kusan. Regarding the paragraph Kusan you saw, you, um, uh, you, what you have to me, uh, uh, see, observe, that the, there are two, um, uh, two branches of Kusan, one is Catfish 1. You see the first was Catfish 1 who issued coins south of Hindu Kush and he minted coppers in imitation of Roman coins. Then what is the importance of this line? He minted co coppers in imitation of Roman coins. It is the influence of Roman in India or um, in Greek. Okay, it is, a it is a Roman influence in Indian art. Mind this thing. Why the line is important? The first was Catfish one who issued coins south of Hindustan. He minted coppers in imitation of Roman in imitation of Roman coins. That means it is a in Roman influence in Indian art. That's why it is important. Then after that you see uh, Konisko erected a monastery in and a huge stupa in Pech, uh, in Pechuar, uh, who's, who is excited the wonder of foreign traveler. It is very important from art and architecture point of view. You might find option in example. For example, Konisko uh, erected a monastery and a stupa in Puruspura or Pechuar in Mothura. It is Puruspura or Pechuar. Uh, those persons, those students who have history optional, um, you, you have tried to mark these uh, places in map, okay. Where is Purushpura, where is Pechuar, where is Mothura, okay. Then minded how it is important, Konisko erected a monastery and a huge stupa in Mothura, option 1 Mothura, option 2 Purushpura or Pechuar. Where Konisko erected a monastery and a huge stupa, it is in Purushpura or Pechuar. Then after that you see the why the Kushan ruler is important. The Kushan ruler has introduced the Shaka era in India and it is, in, uh, it is used by the government of India. It is important from culture point of view. Okay, important, uh, consider the following uh, arguments, statements regarding the Shaka era. Mind that it is the name of the name is Shaka era but it is not introduced by the Shaka rulers. Okay, so don't be confused. The examiner might ask question to make confuse you. Saka ruler was introduced by the Saka era was introduced by the Saka rulers or Saka was was introduced by the Kushan rulers. It was not by the Saka rulers. It was introduced by the Kushan rulers. Name is only Saka era. Okay, then after it, you see he held a Buddhist council in Kashmir where the doctrine of Mahayana form of Buddhism was finalized. Konisko was also a great patron of art and Sanskrit literature. Okay, you, we all know that the Mohayan form of Buddhism was uh, finalized in during the time of Konisko. But the last line you see, Konisko was also a great patron of art and Sanskrit literature. It is important, important from culture point of view. That's why I try to remember this line. Okay, then after that you try to see, especially at a place called Topra Kala in Khorzem. Which lies about uh, south about the RLC on the Oxus, a huge Kushan palace of the third fourth centuries has been unearthed. Then try to mark the point key term Topra Kala. You might find sometimes a short note, write a short, short note on Topra Kala in mains exam. I don't think it is so much important for um, uh, general uh, studies students, Topra Kala, but history students, you should try to remember this thing Topra Kala. Write a short note on Topra Kala. So you see impact of Central Asian context. Here we have, you will might find question, who is of the following is not a central Asian contact into India. For example, you see, burnt brick, burnt brick, one option one, burnt brick, option two, use of shurki, S-U-R-K-I-H-I, shurki is a kind of building material like mortar or cement. 
ओके नंबर वन बांड ब्रिक नंबर टू सुर्खी नंबर थ्री टाइल्स नंबर फोर ब्रिक वाल्स नंबर फाइव रेड वेयर पोतारी रेड पोतारी the who is of the following is not a influence of central asian contact into india who is of the following does not show the who is of the following is not a component of central asia uh, cent, not a central asian contact in india number 1 burnt brick number 2 brick wall number 3 surkhi number 4 tiles and number 5 red pottery all these are central asian contacts into india but the thing is that there is a line in this paragraph if you read carefully then you will mind it that the use of surkhi and tiles may not have been adopted from outside okay this this says that the surkhi and tiles is not compulsorily a central asian influence on india okay that's why if you find a question in different way for example who is of the following is essentially a central asian impact in india then the answer will be different okay then the But, um, then the surkhian tiles will not come because the paragraph mentions that that we cannot uh, signify surely that surkhi and tiles are central asian contact that is why if your question says that who is of the following is essentially a central asian contact in india then it will come only burnt brick brick wall and red pottery okay then in this time uh, surkhi use of surkhi and tiles will not be appropriate because the paragraph mentions that the use of surkhi and tiles may not have been adopted from outside that's why um, it is not essentially a central asian contact in india then in there are um, in this paragraph you will find different lines which describes the characteristics of red pottery okay so read them very carefully you will find question in exam who is of the following is not a characteristics of red pottery by greeks here sometimes mentions that this the pottery is generally sprinklers and spouted channels uh, they remind us of the red pottery with thin fabric found in the same period of usalder in central asia red pottery techniques are widely known in central asia and they are found even in regions like paragana who is on the peripheries of the kuchan culture region here you will find different points regarding the red pottery a thin fabric is found in red pottery okay try to you know, mark these points you will find question who is of the following is not a characteristics of red pottery then you have to mark the answer then after is a better cavalry in this paragraph the most important point is that the kusha kushans came into india but they you see what are the difference between british and uh, other dynasty like kushan british came into india but british did not adopt the indian culture they did not try to integrate with indian culture but the kushans these greek rulers came into india but they integrated with indian culture totally it is important from culture point of view because if you find option because uh, the uh, kushans were totally integrated with indian culture then the option is right okay because they came and they adopted indian uh, climate indian tradition to some extent and they tried to integrate with uh, indian culture that is why it is important and it is right option then the another thing is that mind is uh, since they did not have their uh, script written language or any organized religion mind is the kushans did not have any script they did not have their own script they did not have any written language and they did not have any organized religion and they adopted these components of culture from india that is why you if you find question um, that who is of the following is not adopted by greeks from india or who is of the following is adopted by greeks from india for example uh, for example um, script written language and religion all these three are adopted by greeks from india because the greeks did not have their number one own script number two own language number two organized religion these three things have not been owned by greeks okay that is why kushans adopted these things from indian religion it is a influence of indian in greeks mind this thing you write in answer while writing in answer you mind uh, you might find this thing uh, in a uh, uh, mains answer writing okay mains question paper gs1 that is why while writing in gs paper or um, in one you have to um, 
keep in mind these things okay they did not have own script own language own religion they adopted this from india and they became an integral part of indian society to which they contributed considerably but uh, what was the you know, contribution of Greeks to india they introduced cavalry and the use of riding horse cavalry riding horse they contributed to uh, they contributed to india by cavalry and riding horse so they contributed cavalry cavalry actually was a contribution of greeks to india cavalry was introduced by cavalry was introduced by greeks um, into india then uh, another thing is that schedule who is uh, <coughs> bound on the horse schedule reins these are things uh, these, these are some things all the things related to cavalry uh, schedule reins or uh, reins means who is used to uh, make the horse stop okay r e i n rein schedule schedule means the uh, a person uh, uh, it is a uh, schedule is a uh, uh, schedule is a piece of cloth or something who is actually above the horse on the uh, schedule actually on the schedule actually a cavalier uh, on the schedule actually a cavalier run okay this schedule rain cavalry these are the contribution of greeks to india then another thing is that very uh, most important line they made common the use of rain and schedule which appear in the buddhist sculpture of the second and third century ad this line is important because you might find question in exam hall the rain and which of the following is not a central Asian contact in buddhist sculpture the use of rain and schedule in buddhist sculpture mind that this is the rain and schedule which was which was used in buddhist sculpture is a uh, is an impact of central Asian influence because central Asian uh, central Asian, Asian especially the greeks contributed cav um, to india by cavalry cavalry was introduced by the greeks in india uh, mind this thing and then uh, another thing is that what are the other um, uh, impacts of central Asian in India Sherwani you see the Sherwani who is generally now people at present people used to uh, at present people wear the Sherwani Sherwani cap helmet both these are the contributions of central asia into india so from this paragraph what we have to see that we have to see the what are the greek influences or what are the central asian influences in india or what are the indian influences on central asia okay for example what we have seen burnt brick brick wall shurki tile red pottery horse cavalry uh, horse or cavalry same schedule rain uh, sherwani both helmet cap these are the central asian influences on india and among among them the shurki and tiles are not necessarily not necessarily the central asian contact and uh, what are the indian things what are the indian thing uh, cultural components which are adopted by the greeks um, they are indian religion uh, Indian script and Indian language these uh, com uh, India components of Indian culture were adopted by Central Asian mind this thing then after that in case of trade and culture you see the gold was imported from Central Asia it is not much more important just try to remember these things while reading okay the Saka in Kusans strengthened the idea of the divine origin of kingship Asuka was called to dear to God but the Kusan kings were called sons of God this title was adopted by the Kusans from the Chinese who called their king the son of heaven this thing is important you might find object question the divine origin of kingship was strengthened by the in india by central Asians. the divine origin of kingship was strengthened in india by shaka and kusans or the central Asians were adopter or the central Asians were follower of the ideology of divine origin of kingship it uh, all are right the Kasaka Kusan and especially the Central Asians were the um, follower of the uh, ideology divine origin of kingship. <sighs> the another thing is that Kushan kings were called sons of gods. This title was adopted by the Kusans from the Chinese. You might find in the question which of the following was a 
Chinese influence on Kuchan. This title, Son of God, this the Chinese rulers actually tell themselves the Son of God, and Kuchan also adopted this title, and it was a Chinese influence on Kuchan. Mind this thing. Then another thing is that the Hindu lawgiver Manu asked the people to respect the king even he is a child because he is a great god ruling in the form of human being. That means what the our Hindu uh, our um, Hindu lawgiver the Manu who writes the Hindu law he also says that the kingship is a divine origin. That means it is a cultural component. It is a cultural similarity between Greek and India Indian rulers or Greek uh, Greek and Indian lawgivers so while writing answers. Um, the contribution of Greeks to India or the assimilation of uh, cultural components between Central Asia and India, you might have to mention this point in your answer. The another important point is that the Kushans also introduced the Shatrapa system of government. Mind this thing, Shatrapa system of government and what is Shatrapa system of government? Yeah, it is given in the paragraph, you mind this thing. The Greeks also introduced the practice of military governorship and they appointed their governors called Stratezos. Okay, mind this term S T R E T E Z O S Stratezos and Shatrapa. You might find question in exam which of the following terms is not anyway related with the Greeks Shatrapa and Stratezo. Okay, the both are related to Greek. And again you find question in another way Shatrapa. Shatrapa, S A T R S Shatrap, uh, this a system of government introduced by the Kushans. Again, Stratazo, governor, military governor introduced by the Greeks. In this way, you might find question both are right. Then another thing is the new after the paragraph after that paragraph you find new elements in Indian society. This paragraph is very important from culture point of view, especially while you're writing answer in mains VS1. You might find question the when you find question the regarding the cultural assimilation of Central Asia in India, you India, you find elements or you find points to this question from this answer. One is that the log of her mono uh, Log if her mono recognized them, uh, the Central Asian uh, or the Greeks as a Kshatriya. They included the Greeks into the uh, societal structure of Kshatriya. Indian society accepted the Greeks or Central Asians into the Indian social structure of Kshatriya. It is a most uh, it is a most influential and it is the most prominent characteristics of cultural assimilation. The a tribe or a person some persons who is a totally outside the Indian climate and came into India but Indian climate totally accepted them Indian society totally accepted them even the lawgiver Manu has also accepted them it is a very noticeable in, uh, element of cultural assimilation Uh, in case of religious development, you see the Greek ambassador called Heliodorus Shetape Pilar in honor of Bosudeva near Bidisa in Madhya Pradesh around the middle of the 2nd century BC. This line is important, okay. You might find option um, in exam. Uh, uh, the Greek uh, ambassador Heliodorus Shetape Pilar in the honor of who is Diti, Bosudeva, Krishna, Vishnu, Shiva. The Greek ambassador called Heliodorus to set up a pillar in the honor of Bosudev near Bidisa in Madhya Pradesh. It was the pillar was um, uh, here you have to mind two things. The pillar was set up in the honor of uh, Greek ambassador Heliodorus. Greek ambassador Heliodorus called to set up a pillar and to which city? It is Bosudev and to which place? Bidisa in Madhya Pradesh. To where? To home and how? Where means Bidisa in Madhya Pradesh, to home means Greek ambassador Heliodorus and Bosudev. Mind these three points here, remember. Then in this uh, paragraph you will find that who is of the following was a Diti worshipped by Kushan rulers. Who is of the following was uh, worshipped by Kushan. Number one Shiva, number one Buddha, number three. Vishnu, all this uh, number for Bosudev, all these are worshipped by Kusanj. Siva, Buddha, Vishnu, and Bosudev, all these were 
related with uh, um, related with the worship of uh, Kushan rulers. Kushan rulers worship all these deities: Shiva, Buddha, Vasudev, and Vishnu. Then you see the origin of Mahayana Buddhism. We all know that here we have uh, you ha you will find some points uh, that how the Buddhist actually how the Buddhist uh, religion came into extinct. Here you will find some points regarding the deterioration of Buddhist religion, deterioration of Buddhist ideology after the death of Buddha. They actually um, attracted towards the materialism. They uh, uh, they uh, used to take non-vegetarian food. They were much more attracted towards the patronization of king they as a result of this they came into contact with money and coins this changed their mind in this way here you will find some lines regarding the uh, regarding the uh, or deterioration of buddhism but very interestingly this characteristics were these characteristics uh, for example they used the non-vegetarian food they were attracted to materialism these actually um, were this branch of buddhism who actually came away from the original branch of buddhism these were known as the mahayan buddhism and very interestingly kusan ruler actually uh, where a patron is kusan ruler especially konisko was patron of this mahayan buddhism and um, here what you in this paragraph what you will find you will find the causes of deterioration of uh, buddhism characteristics of mahayan buddhism and very interestingly you mind that konisko was great patron of mahayan buddhism mind this thing konisko was a great patron of mahayan buddhism and he in convent buddhist council Tripitok was uh, Tripitok, the most uh, important uh, integral part of Buddhist literature was composed uh, during the reign of Konisko in this council. So mind this thing here. These are very very simple questions. I don't think UPSC will ask this question, but still for our knowledge, you should remember or you should read actually these points. Then after it you say Gandhar and Mothra school of art, it is very important from exam point of view. But here the thing is that the yeah, answer the NCRT, when you read Gandhar and Mothura, who is a mentioned in NCRT, they are not actually enough from culture point of view. Based on the points given in NCRT, you have to extend your knowledge searching on net or, or any other standard book. The things which are given in uh, NCRT are very preliminary. Everyone knows about the Gandharan Mothura School of Art, which are given here. Then again, see you see uh, pieces of sculpture show synthesis synthesis of both local and Indian elements under the Buddhist uh, Buddhism. I already told you uh, the Greek, this Hellenistic art was not to purely Greek and not purely Indian. It was a synthesis of both Indian and Greek. Uh, the Buddha were made in the Gracio Roman style. The hair of the Buddha was fashioned in the Gracio Roman style. Okay, you might find question in exam that uh, hair of the Mahayan Buddha or the hair of the Hellenistic Buddha was fashioned in Gracio Roman style, only Roman style or only Greek style. It is Gracio Roman style. This means it is the, the hair of the Buddha, Hellenistic Buddha, especially. Uh, um, uh, who is was made uh, um, during the reign of Konisko? Okay, Gandhar, uh, the Buddha, Gandhar Buddha, or the hair of the Gandhar Buddha was combination of Greek and Roman st style. It was not Greek only, it was not Roman only. Mind this thing. In exam, you will might find question the hair of the Gandhar Buddha or the hair of the Hellenistic Buddha was styled in Greek, Gracio Roman fashion, Greek fashion, and Roman fashion. It is Gracio Roman fashion mind this thing then another thing is that uh, here we have found two um, uh, two um, uh, 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 school of art Gandhar and Mothura Gandhar was much more influenced by Greek and in comparison to Gandhar Mothura was much more traditional Mothura used traditional elements to produce a sculpture then you see Mothura produced beautiful images of the Buddha but it is also famous for the headless erect statue of Konisko whose name is inscribed on its lower part it also produced several stone images of Bardhaman Mahabir. So you might find exam which of the following statues are not found in Mothura. Headless erect statue of Konisko, 
statue of stone images of Bardhaman Mahabir. All these are found in Mathura. Stone images of Bardhaman. Uh, uh, stone images of Bardhaman Mahabir. Headless erect statue of Kaniska. Uh, both these sculptures are found in Mathura. Mind this thing. Then another thing is that each pre-Gupta sculpture and inscription ignore Krishna, although Mathura is associated, considered his birthplace and scene of early life. Uh, mind this thing, Krishna was a not a prevalent deity before pre-Gupta uh, Gupta period. Okay, that is why I have already told you which of the following is not a prevailing deity in the Central Asian time. Okay, which of the following was not worshipped by the Greeks or Central Asians? I already told you Buddha, Vasudev, Vishnu, oh, Krishna. Krishna was not prevalent during this time. Okay, so if you find question in regarding Krishna, Krishna is not a correct answer. Krishna was not worshipped by the Greeks or Central Asians because before uh, Gupta period, Krishna was not popular. Uh, Krishna, the worship of Krishna was not popular. It was uh, the uh, the deities who is who is a popular popular during this time were Shiva, Vishnu, Buddha, and Vasudev. Krishna was not a popular deity during this time. Then another thing is that here during the same period we notice beautiful works of art at several places south of the Bindha. Beautiful Buddhist caves were constructed out of rocks in Maharashtra. In Andhra Pradesh, Nagarjunkanda and Amravati became great centers of Buddhist art. And the stories connected with the Buddha came to be portrayed in numerous panels. Here the question arises, which of the following is not a development of art and architecture during the reign of Greeks? Which of the following is not a development of art and architecture during the context of Central Asia, during the course of context of Central Asia into India? Development of uh, cave architecture in Nagarjunkanda, development of cave architecture in Amravati. Both these cave architecture were developed during the context of during the reign of Greeks, especially Kushan ruler. Okay, both these cave architecture, especially in Nagarjunkanda and Amravati, get the, got developed during the reign of Kushan. Then another sentence you see the earliest panels dealing with the Buddhism are found at Gaya, Sanchi and Varhut and belong to the second century BC okay that means here uh, the, um, uh, uh, during the Kushan ruler what happened the Mahayan form of Buddhism developed and what is the characteristics of Mahayan form of Buddhism it actually depicted the uh, picture of Buddha it depicted the statue of Buddha okay the before Mahayan uh, the actually Buddha was not actually physically depicted instead of the physical statue of Buddha some symbols were depicted for Buddha but al along with the uh, arrival of Mahayan Buddhism during the rule of Kusan, the states of Buddha, Buddha were depicted and the, some stories uh, related to the Buddha, life of Buddha were also depicted in caves and one uh, such and such some kind of such uh, depiction of Buddha's depiction of stories of uh, Buddha's life are found in the cave Gaya, Sanchi and Varhud. So if you find in exam, uh, which of the following does not portray the uh, panel of Buddha? Gaya, Sanchi, Varhud. All these three caves actually portrays the life stories or panels of Buddha. Okay. And all these, my another important thing is that all these development actually have occurred during the Kushan ruler. Then come literature and learning. Here you see Kaiba style. The most important thing is that the Kaiba style and it was developed by the Rudra Daman. Junagar here you have to, uh, here you have to remember three points. Kaiba style. Junagar inscription and uh, uh, Junagar inscription. Both these are related to Rudra Daman. The earliest specimen of Kaiba style is found in the Junagar description of Rudra Daman in Kathiar. You might find question, write a short note Kaiba style Junagar inscription. So try to find at Google what is Kaiba style, what is Junagar inscription. Try to uh, prepare it, uh, two or three line notes against each. Um, 
point and uh, the, all these are import uh, related to Rudradaman means Zunagor inscription was related to Rudradaman and this Zunagor inscription was written in Kaiba style. Then after that you will find some name of the books Asabhush. He was the patronage, he was patronized by Kushanular and what does did Asabhush wrote? Buddha Charit and Sondarananda. Uh, Sondarananda is a fine example of Sanskrit Kaiba. So mind these things who wrote what and in which style. Then another key term is Abadan. What is Avadan? A V A A V A D A N A S. Avadan. What is here the mind? You have to mind Avadan. Key terms are Avadan, Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit. What is Avadan? You write two or three lines uh, um, regarding Avadan. You have to prepare notes. So what is Avadan? It means Abhadan was the precincts of Mahayan uh, Buddhism. It, uh, the Mahayan Buddhism, the um, uh, devotees of Mahayan Buddhism, uh, um, priest the, uh, uh, their religion among different parts, the, um, priest Mahayan Buddhism among different parts, and these precincts of Mahayan Buddhism uh, were actually composed as Abhadan, uh, uh, like Mahavastu Abhadan, Dibba Abhadan, and these Abhadans were written in Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit. So, prepare notes on these things Avadan Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit then you see who is of the following was not a contribute who is of the following was a contribution to of the Greeks to Indian culture or Indian theater you see in uh, use of cartoon the Greeks contributed to the development of Indian theater by introducing the use of cartoon since the cartoon was borrowed from the Greeks it came to be known as Yabanika Yabanika, which is a part of Indian theater, which is used as a screen. Okay, in Indian theater, it actually derives, it is derived from the Greeks. It is a Greek influence on Indian theater, Yabanika. Mind this thing. Then it is Kamsutra. It was written during this time. Then in case of science and technology, you will find that the water the Greek uh, uh, influence on Indian science. The, uh, uh, here one thing is mentioned then horoscope horoscope is actually Greek word uh, um, uh, 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 horoscope is a G Greek word okay and horoscope was derived from the G Greek word it is a uh, Greek influence on India then another one drama this uh, this is derived from the Greek term drasma okay drama horoscope these are actually Greek influence on India and what is Indian influence on Greek the Indian influence on Greek, you will find in the, this uh, paragraph that when Greek issued coins, in these coins actually Greek actually portrayed or Greek depi depicted different Indian motifs like uh, dogs, cattle, Indian spices, Indian ivory. These Indian motifs were depicted by Greeks in their coins. It is Indian influence on Greek. Then you find Sorok and Shushrut. Okay. Then what did they do or what are their contribution? You will find in, in a different way in Google and try to make notes. Uh, Sorok and Shushrut. Okay. Then after that you see there are uh, towards the last part or towards the last part of this paragraph or towards the last part of this chapter you will find some Roman influences. Okay. The practice of making leaders so begin in India during this period. Uh, it is important. Okay. The, what is the importance of Kushan rule or what, uh, who, um, which of the following was, uh, be, which of the following began during the Kushan rule or which of the following was the impact of Central Asia in India, leaders so it is also an impact of Central Asia or impact of Kushan. Um, in any case, the Kusan copper coins in India were imitation of Roman coin. Similarly, gold coins in India were struck by the Kusan in imitation of Roman gold coin. I already told you, in case of uh, the coins which were uh, issued by the uh, Kusan ruler, it bears the impact, two impacts. One is Indian impact and another is Roman impact. What is the Indian impact? The Indian impact is that they use the Indian motifs like Indian ivory, Indian spices, Indian mint. Indian in, in their uh, in their coins and what is the Roman effect they actually use the technology which was used by the Greek okay minting process it was it bears the influence of Roman so I have here completed the centralist and contact in the result here and I in next lecture I'll come with another chapter from ancient